Natural oil finishes are very popular with many hobbyist woodworkers because they're easy to apply, they're nearly impossible to mess up, and they leave a low luster sheen that looks great. They aren't terribly durable, but there's a lot to like about them. That was until the snake oil salesman in the finishing industry began filling everyone's head with a bunch of nonsense, confusing the issue with a whole range of products that they label oil finishes. In this video, we'll try to cut through some of that nonsense so you know what type of oil to use on your next project. The most common oil finish used by woodworkers may be boiled linseed oil. If you're wondering what a linseed is, it's just another name for flaxseed, which is very nutritious, although I wouldn't drink boiled linseed oil. A few hundred years ago, someone discovered that you could put the oil on wood and it would make it look pretty while offering a measure of protection against moisture and dirt. The problem is it took two to three or more days per coat to dry and sometimes it never seemed to fully cure, so the wood always felt a little sticky. So someone boiled it, added some lead and I think probably a dash of salt and pepper, and the result was faster polymerization. Today. It's not really boiled. They just add metallic dryers, which is why you shouldn't drink it. But it's still called boiled linseed oil, and it dries much faster than the raw stuff. That's a good thing, because while a great looking BLO finish can be achieved in just two or three coats, it takes many thin coats to effectively protect wood long term. You also have to maintain it by adding more from time to time, or the luster will dull. BLO will also yellow over time. Some folks like that. Other people don't. It can even become rancid and turn black under certain conditions, which makes it a poor finish for cutting boards and bowls. Tongue oil is another common natural oil finish that's been around for quite a while. Confucius wrote about tongue oil, which the Chinese simply called wood oil. Marco Polo said the Chinese used it to waterproof their boats, but we all know Marco Polo was a liar. So needless to say, it was around long before some guy named Formsby started selling it. Despite the name tongue oil, it doesn't come from a tree's tongue, it comes from its nuts. And while it is in some ways similar to boiled linseed oil, there are some important differences. For one thing, pure tongue oil is just that, pure. It isn't treated to speed up drying time. So it dries more slowly than BLO, though not as slow as raw linseed oil. While BLO will yellow and even turn rancid with age, tongue oil remains more stable over time. Tongue oil is a bit more difficult to apply though. Not only does it take longer to dry between coats, but it often takes more coats of tongue oil to achieve a nice finish. It is a bit more water resistant than BLO, but it still won't protect as well as a varnish. Unfortunately, many products labeled tongue oil are actually concoctions that contain only a bit of pure oil. If the can mentions something about petroleum distillates or mineral spirits or hydrocarbons, it's not pure tongue oil. In many cases, it's simply a polyurethane based wiping varnish, which is true of our next oil finish. Danish oil sounds nice and exotic, but it's not from Denmark and it's not exactly oil. It's a mix of tongue or boiled linseed oil, polyurethane and mineral spirits. Some brands throw some other stuff in there too so they can make crazy claims about what it'll do, but you can make your own for a lot less than the manufacturer's charge just by mixing those three ingredients together. Sometimes they try to squeeze a few more dollars out of you by calling it teak oil or something even more exotic, but read the label, it's pretty much the same thing. Now it's not a bad finish. It penetrates like a natural oil, but it offers a little more protection because of that polyurethane in it but you could achieve the same results with a coat or two of a much less expensive BLO and then top coat with some thinned out polyurethane. Finally, we have mineral oil, which is different from the other natural oil finishes because it'll give you diarrhea if you eat it. Actually, the other ones may too, but mineral oil is sold in drug stores as a cure for constipation. In fact, that's where I buy it because it's way cheaper at the drug store and I eat a lot of cheese. Mineral oil does not cure or harden like other oils. It just soaks in and makes the wood look pretty while helping to repel some moisture. It's a good finish for cutting boards and bowls because it doesn't go rancid, it won't yellow over time, and it won't last long. I suppose that last point was more of a con than a pro, but it is easy to reapply. And did I mention you could eat it? Those are the most common oils used for wood finishing. Be sure to check out our video about wood varnishes, which I'll link to below. Then you have all the information you need to choose the right finish for your next project. See you next time. 
Power carving is a blast. You should try it sometime. Grab some scrap wood and some carbide burrs from Sabretooth Power Carving Tools and just give it a go. You may be surprised what you're capable of, like this folk art eagle I made from 2x6s. Check out what Sabretooth has to offer at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.